active uh, approach that they took to their following games after Dom One. I really have liked the the proactive uh, playmaking that we saw from Dom One. They were very very quick in their decisions for their macro as well, following up on some of these skirmish victories that they got. So that's why for Rogue, my eyes are super heavily on the jungle matchup here uh, for Inspire, trying to get him a good matchup and something that they can actually create opportunities early on for the bottom lane should be the way to go. Because this bottom lane for Rogue has really impressed. Hansama going super aggressive picks, Kalista, Draven, these types of things uh, to try and, try and get Dragon Control, try and make some of those plays, start adding to the pressure and building up towards soul victories. Looking at the bands, we got Twisted Fate, Caitlyn, Nidalee, Lucian, Akali, and Irelia all banned away. I mentioned Nidalee's incredible presence in drafts so far in the tournament. She's going to be banned out here again. And there it is, first pick <laughs> Orn for Rogue. You like to see it, Captain Flowers. Finn on top side means Finn on weak side means Finn on the tank. Orn going to hand out some value to the rest of his teammates. Um, this is a very good opener for Rogue, considering the top laner he's going against here. Zoom is one of the most punishing in the 1v1s. So we shall see uh, how JDG rotate their flex picks here to try and get Zoom the biggest of upper hands that they can possibly have to try and create some space there versus Finn, you know, then maybe even out the bottom side via teleports and, and map pressure. Well, looking at the two picks that, let's see if that size is locked in. Okay, so both of these picks have some serious repercussions for that Orn. They can punish this. Silas, you mentioned in the last draft when Silas was banned, how you can steal the Orn ulti away and have a lot of effect with it. And Set, remember that Set's ultimate scales off of the health of the opponent that he dunks. So you can just grab that big old meatball and throw him on the floor and do a ton of damage to his team if you position it correctly. But the response from Rogue, they're picking up Graves in the jungle. We've seen so much of this champion okay. so far. We'll see more of him here today. And let's see if they lock that Azir. Yeah, this is the determining pick. If they lock the Assassin for Larson, they're going New Age Rogue. If they lock the Azir or the Corky, they're going Old Style Rogue. So it seems more Old Style Rogue here. This is what did uh, lead to a lot of their success during the, the regular split for LEC, where you know Rogue and Mad Lions were at the top and they were pushing down G2 and Fnatic. It was this style for Rogue where they are very calculated. Um, they've got, again, control mage here for Larson. I think he's been really good um, you know, on the Azir, on the Orianna. Uh, so we shall see if they can you know, maybe shift something up with the bottom lane picks. There is a reason why Rogue are saving their bot lane picks here towards the end of the draft, which is fairly rare in the current meta. Um, and we shall see what the surprise is after the bans come through. There is, again, the pressure draft from JDG. This is something we saw in the first round. Robin, I absolutely loved it. They picked four melee champions. They called over Kanavi to push mid lane for Yagao and then go dive. Like they constantly are looking for kill threat for pressure moves to create openings for themselves with these dive possibilities. Uh, and with the echo pickup, that is gonna go a long way for a dangerous matchup. I like the Ash ban from a team that's drafting multiple melee champions, mm. stopping her from keeping you at bay with the long range and the permanent slows. Ezreal ban will be the choice here for Rogue like that as well. If everybody's diving in together, an AD carry that can keep himself safe from the counterattack of the enemy team would be a good one to ban out. Let's see what the final ban here is from JDG. That clock is running down. Senna. Yeah, taking away some of the possible safety. For me again, though, I'm looking at Rogue for, for an aggro bottom lane. Um, I really think that that is the area of the map where, where they should be trying to play their early game off of. Um, and especially since you've got Orianna and Orn for your solo lanes. Uh, Orianna is, you know, excels in midfield as well as uh, in, in scaling and bring the utility for later. So it is going to be up to uh, the bottom side to try and create that sort of uh, resilient action. Twitch band away. Okay, another AD carry focused band here. So honestly, the second phase of bands, all AD carries all the time, and the gin is locked in for JDG. You can see there on your screen, 62% win rate so far, Mr. Kobe. Not too bad. <laughs> 
Not yeah. too bad. It's also one of the AD carries that excels greatly when you have possible dive comps. When you have multiple melee allies, uh, Jin is able to keep super long range, and usually marksmen have a, a difficult time following up on those types of plays. But Jin, obviously, with the extended range, can not only snare people to accelerate um, you know, midfield picks here for uh, for the melee champions and, and land your W, but also follow up the kills in on anybody that does get away. Plus, it's one of the AD carries that uh, does have a pretty nice power curve, just stacking a bunch of damage early on um, and, and possibly bringing some lethality to what is already a double mage composition that they have with Echo and Silas. Hey, Kobe, you said you wanted some aggressive bot laning. How's Callista Pantheon sound? That's just what the doctor ordered, Captain Flowers. I am one of the people that always roots for the underdog, always roots for upsets in these groups. I want to see Rogue make this group interesting. Vander and Han Sama with the Omega pairing of playmaking. Oh, baby, Pantheon and Callista. For those of y'all who might have missed the number pop up on your screen when the Pantheon was locked in, 71% 70 win rate so far at Worlds. And the final pick of the draft will be the Camille for Zoom. So that set that was locked in early will go down to Lamau. He'll be able to use that one against the Pantheon there in the bottom lane. But man, Callista Pantheon, this is such a deadly duo. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoy watching it. Uh, the possibilities are are really endless here. And, and I, whenever you have a matchup like this, I think the priority on on an early sweeper on control wards in your lane brush just rises like crazy. Because if you have a grave slipping into a lane gank through your lane brush, which is kind of an underutilized strategy, especially for bottom side, since usually there are a lot more wards that are super prevalent, that that extra, extra power goes twofold. When you have a Pantheon and Callista, which are extremely good at tower diving, because you have multiple ways to drop, drop tower aggro. Pantheon can immune tower shots. You can also then Callista ult him out. Plenty of crowd control to set up Graves damage. The only problem with this loadout from Rogue is that the plan is so clear. Yeah, <laughs> and especially for the early stages, very clear. So that just means that JDG will have to have their own answer to that plan already crafted and ready to go unless they want to be the victims of that Callista Pantheon power, man. Just thinking about Pantheon E in combination with Callista Alti and what you're talking about with the ways that they can juggle the aggro, stop the damage. It's such a difficult situation to deal with and actually be able to effectively target them, especially with Callista going into a matchup against multiple melee champions. You've got to make sure you're hitting those skill shots, getting the CC down onto her. Otherwise, very easy for that champion to kite melee opponents out with the Martial Cadence. Also, Pantheon pretty thematically accurate for this group as Rogue have been drafted into the group of death uh, and the Spartans, they're trying to pull off <laughs> pull off a big victory here. He's holding them off at the pass. Let's see if they can pull it off. JDG, meanwhile, they want to head into their rematch with Damwon with full confidence. So they are looking to stomp their way through today till they're meeting up with Damwon again mm -hmm. and really fight Damwon for that number one spot in the group. Because coming into the tournament, this was a fairly close playing field for JDG. But after the first game, and it's just a best of one game, where Damwon were so easily able to overcome JDG and skirmish after skirmish and outplay after outplay, I think a lot of people ha have actually lost a decent amount of confidence there. And JDG want to build that back up to build the hype for the rematch. All right, once again, setting the stage for those of y'all who might not have been with us here at the very beginning when we came back to the broadcast. Remember, if JDG wins this game, Rogue and PSG Talon are both eliminated from Worlds. Yes, they will play out the rest of their games today, but the outcome of those games will not matter. The only thing that'll still be left to be decided is between JDG and Dom Juan for who will take first seed and who will take second. If Rogue wins this game, PSG, Talon, and Rogue both still have their hopes alive moving forward into the rest of the matches. So a lot on the line here. Rogue, it's do or die in this match. Now, let's get into some interesting stats here because okay. we like to look at uh, the proximities that players have to each other in the first 15 minutes. Your percentage of time that you spend near other players. And for looking at the bottom lane, Hansama and Vander, so far they, they have one of the highest duo proximities, time spent, 
spent together. Usually, that indicates a lack of roaming, but remember that when this bottom lane roamed already in group stage, they were roaming together. They duo ganked multiple times <laughs> towards the mid lane. So they are still very active, uh, despite having a very close uh, you know, amount of time spent together. Uh, so especially when they get the early push. Uh, you know, look for those opportunities inspired here, though, with a blue into red start here for Graves right over the back of the wall. When you play against Silas Jungle, you want to make it about farming because Silas Jungle's farming is terrible. <laughs> As bottom lane gets pushed out and ignited, uh, a little bit close for comfort there for Loken, but Graves farming versus Silas farming not close is a freaking Grand Canyon of a difference and oh, inspired Oh, he's gonna find him right walking into the brush right there Kanavi tries to stroll on over thinks he's got a red buff waiting for him instead It's just a mouthful of buckshot you hate to see it inspired with the smite there as well Making sure he gets the big chicken out of that Raptor camp Everything's going over the way of rogue here in this top side of the jungle and that jungle matchup gets really difficult for the Silas if you get behind behind early and you are forced into a pattern of catch up farm, then you lose so much potential from this pick. Yeah, you know, technically it is a flex pick, but if you put it into the jungle, you are putting yourself at a big possible deficit here. And I love to see how inspired one of the ones we are pointing out to look for in the intro for this matchup is taking things into his own hands here. Really nice early path, takes away the red, cuts him off at the Raptors and tries to take away any possible power here from the Silas. If you delay his level three, then he can't even get into skirmishing. Ooh, top side, nice trade. A little bit of spiciness here between Finn and Zoom, but yeah, Inspired also left one chicken in that camp when he was counter jungling, so that timer hasn't even reset. Yeah, tell the tale of what happened oh, here, chicken. it's the worst, the chicken counter jungling. Now he's gonna have to go in there, but Kanavi is trying to counter jungle the enemy right here now. He has backup from his bottom lane, and now Vander's in some trouble. The Pantheon is caught out of position, but he takes the first blood. It is a one-for-one one trade. Kanavi dead. Not the situation he needed to be in. He already lost his red. He tries to steal one back, and instead, he just leashes it for Graves. Put the TY less than three in the all chat after that one. He just did you a favor. Well, Flowers, it wasn't one versus 300, but it was one versus three there for Vander, and he comes away with the kill on the jungler like a true Spartan. What a beast of a support there. He completes the game plan of starving Kanavi. That catch up being denied Kanavi means he is just scavenging for pickup here. He makes a pass towards topside. Uh, he's only got his Krug camp. As you mentioned, the chicken there uh, in, the, feels bad. in the small camp is the only thing remaining for him. And that is that is not even a full chicken thigh. That is not a chicken breast. That is one crumb off of a popcorn chicken piece. Oh, it's half a chicken nugget just for some reason left in the bottom of the box. And now the dive's coming in the bottom lane. It's a three-man dive. Goodbye, Logan. Rogue makes it happen. Well, if you're a fan of the upsets, you are smiling ear to ear right now because the Jungle Kingdom has been enacted by Rogue. And again, it's a team game. Vander doing his part, uh, defending that red, taking down Kanavi. See what Kanavi can do to try and scavenge his way back into it, though. Because you see Inspired bottom side, he knows, all right, I've got a brief window. Let me get some camps here off of their I side of the map ones. before Orianna collapses. You saw Larson heading over. He's like, Kanavi, you, you can have the wolves, but you better get out of there before you I start eyeballing that Grom. You can have the wolves, but we draw the line at the big old frogs. Leave that alone, get the hell out of town, and it looks like he'll do just that. Honestly, the farm between these two is pretty similar in the jungle. Despite the early difficulties for Kanavi, he has done a good job catching up, finding that farm where he can with that wolf camp. So now he'll just go back to farming his own bottom side. Blue buff should be spawning again here pretty soon for both of these sides. As you can see, the trading back and forth in the top lane. Farm is even between them, so Finn's perfect fine with that situation scaling up here on the orn does hit level six first goes for the orn horn but camille says see you later finn you got no mana you can chase him down but what are you going to do he's not going to just stand there and let you bonk him yeah he's uh, showing off the bowling skills though does hit it 
Got that Camille, <laughs> dead and center. Uh, meanwhile, as you're mentioning, uh, Kanavi here does uh, have these small camps to, to rely upon. Yagao threatening the dive now, and there's no ult on Finn. There's no ult on Finn, and both of these champions have aggro drop for whoever tanks the turret first. There you go, Yagao ends up using it, but now Zoom goes in. Hextech ultimatum will buy him enough time to get the kill, but it's a trade one for one thanks to the turret damage. So Finn is down, and Kanavi and Yagao now doing the damage onto the turret, looking to take down those plates. But what's this, Kobe? Back in the bottom lane yet again, Inspired is looking for Loken. The Jin still has the flash, doesn't have to use it to escape this one. But now, Set is all alone underneath the turret. Here comes Larson on the Orianna. The Haymaker doing good job just to try to buy a little <gasps> bit more time. Inspired takes the kill, but Loken with a deadly flourish to finish him off. All right, honestly, cheers from the crowd for the, the kills for both weak sides. JDG answers with a kill there. Finn also really well played, honestly. In the 3v1 up there, he got multiple summoners forced out as well as getting the kill onto Zoom because after Zoom drops aggro with the ultimate, he then autos to finish off the kill, reacquiring that tower aggro. So both weak sides come up with tower kills for themselves. And that is gonna upset a little bit of that early plan from Rogue. I think the bottom side there being uh, turned back around for them is going to be a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, they still have the same uh, the same look going forward though. Vander now back out onto the map to try and get that vision through uh, the jungle here. You want to ward up Raptors and keep Raptors warded against Silas uh, so that you can control mid, mid lane via that camp control. If you take away the Raptors, then it makes it very inefficient for junglers to be pathing uh, as, around mid lane as much. And if you don't have kill threat with Echo, then that matchup becomes a lot less potent. And hey, look at Kanavi, man. He's the first of the junglers to hit level six. He's got a farm advantage over Inspired, who did just hit level six himself. So Inspired's commitment to this bottom lane has given Kanavi a chance to catch up in terms of the farm values here overall. Inspired moves into the enemy jungle. He'll take out this blue buff, so Kanavi won't have that. However, Kanavi has completed his full Runic Echoes purchase, getting back out onto the map. Now it's a pretty big power spike compared to just the ingredients of Warrior being held by Inspired here. Wants to give the blue buff away to Larson. Will be able to do just that using the smoke screen to make sure there's no steal attempt from the side of JDG. And meanwhile, back in bottom lane, it's Han Sama just working on these plates, getting as much extra money as they can. Look oh, at the CS Lamau. difference. 73 versus 45. And now Lamau <laughs> has to try to get himself away from this one. Or does he? The turnaround is there. And Kanavi smacks him upside the head with the chains. That's inspired down on the ground. And JDG tying the game up in kills 4-4. Four to four. Well, Lumao is definitely laughing his ass off right there. <laughs> nice flash, Graves. <laughs> he does lock him back uh, up and the dragon will go over to JDG. JDG happy about that one man. It's always such a trap trying to deal with set. You think you caught him out and all of a sudden big ol' shield just turns things right back around and lets your opponents get the outplay. JDG happy about how that one went down. They also get the crab on the top half of the map and they'll try to Get a little bit of relief here in the bottom lane for Loken and Lamau as they try to catch up in this farm. Like I was saying, it was 75 to 45, 80 to 58. Now that's the biggest discrepancy on this map. Honestly, this is going to be a really fun game as we as we watch the mid game transition uh, because Rogue going with their their similar style there, trying to still get Orn up to uh, level 14 to hand out the extra gold value for the items and bringing the extra engage and team fight power is kind of offset there by JDG having really good side lane potential. This is the extreme advantage that they have on the other side. It's going to be another dichotomy of side lanes versus team fight forcing. And uh, those are always some of the most fun to watch because they put a lot of pressure on decision making and setting up through these objectives already. Uh, Lumao and Kanavi here with full vision control. Oh, they're going for it. Set wants to go in. Pantheon jumping into the fight first, and there you go. As soon as Pantheon's in some trouble, yoink, and he's right out of the trouble once again. However, because they had to use that disengage, JDG now feels confident to take over this top side of the river. You can see the Jin traps being placed down on the ramp as the Rift Herald is secured, and we might see an attempt here from Rogue, but JDG will secure the Rift Herald no fight here at the beginning. 
Gal throwing out that parallel convergence. Oriana ulti finds its way onto the Echo, using the ulti now to reset his HP. TP comes in. JDG on the retreat. Vander down to 300 HP. Looking to turn things around. Here goes the set. Haymaker comes out, not finding the kill. And Inspired will take the one kill of the fight. So it's a Rift Herald for support trade. Yeah, Lumao gonna sacrifice himself for the good of the team. With that Orn ultimate coming, it could have been multiple picks if everybody is, you know, every man for himself just trying to scatter there. But he turns around, looks death face on and says, all right, I'll be the sacrifice. Dunks him right back into the rest of the team. And Rogue will get a counter kill in exchange for this Rift Herald. But this is such an early Rift Herald. 12 minutes, there's still plenty of time for JDG to get full value out of the Rift Held pickup. So still, I definitely like it for them because again, JDG are the ones with the extreme side lane potential there with Camille and Echo. So if you have Rift Held early on for this team, not only do you get turret plate money, but you get to easier transition into your side lanes for your Camille and your Echo that much quicker. I'm liking the fact that we got nine kills in 12 minutes. Hell yeah! I like the fact that we got ourselves a nice, active, bloody game here as Rogue are up about 700 gold compared to their counterparts. Two long swords in the inventory of Inspired leads me to believe the Serrated Dirk will be the next purchase here for the Graves, which I like to see considering the squishiness of the champions on the enemy team here once again, like we saw in the previous game. Kanavi stealing away the Orn ulti here means the next fight could just be this massive collision between the two semi-trucks of the Orn horns ramming into the fight, throwing everybody up in the air. Could turn into absolute madness. However, remember that there's plenty of CC on both sides too, and we know that one way to stop that Orn Horn is to interrupt him when he tries to knock it back. But Shelly is summoned up. They will be able to get bonus plate money out of this one, but here comes the Orn. Jumping in with the Bellows Breath. TP gonna be used next. Silas in some trouble. Kanavi trying to keep himself alive. A very nice Shockwave able to find the kill, and the jungler's already down. Rogue is making the moves and making the plays, and JDG is on the run. Who said Finn was gonna get gapped here? Finn on Orn playing the team play for Rogue. Definitely counting here as he gets the knockup. He punishes Kanavi. That allows the follow-up from Vander there. They get the kill. They also are able to finish off that Rift Herald and push heavily on the top side. The problem is going to be in the future to see Zoom's answer because Zoom's answer comes in the form of that late game split push that we keep talking about, yep. we keep setting up here. He is rushing straight for the Trinity Force and you will be able to convert your Trinity Force procs into true damage later on, uh, which makes it so scary for the Orn. Honestly though, that initiation from Finn locking up Kanavi, then the follow-up Shockwave, the follow-up from Vander there, it was just really good team play from Rogue, and that is what they are going to have to rely on to win this game, those coordinated team plays to try and keep JDG off their win condition. Yeah, that coordination really coming in clutch up there in that top side, making sure that they don't get any more value than they did out of the Rift Herald. The turret still surviving means that first turret bonus is also still on the table here. All plates are gone. We are past 14 minutes now, which means turrets can go down rather quickly if one team manages to out macro the other and get everybody in position for it. Uh -oh. Inspired's in a really bad spot here, tries to get himself away, but the collapse is coming down, and the Haymaker right upside the jaw takes him out. Here comes the Hextech ultimatum, and now Finn's in a real bad spot, flashes over the wall, keeps himself alive, the curtain call is open, and Finn is gone. JDG have managed to find themselves two kills, but it's at the cost of their own mid laner. Yagal died with Chrono Break up. He was CC'd down and was not able to execute on that ulti. But JDG with a man advantage on the map. They go after the Drake. The enemy jungler still dead. They have the smite advantage and they'll secure that one. No contest, two Drakes to none. Flowers, the map state is overwhelmingly in favor of JDG here. It is getting scary for Rogue. When you're the team with the long range engaged with the team fight set up and you're facing two dragons picked up by the team that has so many side lane options you start to get very very worried here jdg really really big picks there taking down graves inside the jungle deep dive for them uh, Yagao and uh, Lu Mao not hesitating on the cooldowns here. Everything expended to kill him before the rest of Rogue arrive. Because Rogue, 
rely on the synergy between players. Meanwhile, the rest of the team, they're early on Finn. So they force out all Finn's cooldowns, flashing over the wall, flash follow from Zoom to get the kill onto him, further feeding that Camille extra cash and allowing him some more presence here. You know, Trinity Force is completed. Vander coming in to try and answer, but Zoom already backing off, not overextending. And you saw there on the very bottom part of the screen in the replay too, what happened to Yigao. He tried to maintain aggro on the rest of the team, but then, <laughs> uh, yeah, it didn't quite work out the way that he was expecting it to. Just got point and clicked by the Pantheon W, and that's not what he wanted to have happen. So now he's trying to escape in the 1v2 down here as Larson comes to collapse. Finn on the chase. Meanwhile, top side problems for Zoom as he gets himself away with a Hextech ultimatum. Nice dodge, avoid and evade up there. Yigao still trying to run away. Rush. Larson continuing the chase. Parallel convergence coming down. Shockwave goes through. More damage onto Yigao. Kiting it out. How fancy are his feet? Can Yigao get away? Chrono break right back into the loving, waiting arms of the Bonk Master himself. Finn picks up a kill on Yagao, but meanwhile on the top side, it's Loken getting a kill on to Hansama. There are dead bodies all over Summoner's Rift. Half of the players in this game are seeing grayscale on their screen right now. Time for a lesson, Captain Flowers. What we're seeing on our screen is the ramifications of trying to pull off two plays on two different sides of the map at the same time. Rogue pull off the 2v1 power play bottom side, but it takes so long to chase down an Echo, and there's no there's no teleport on Larson, so Finn would have been the only one to join back topside. If you make that bold of a play, you had better be gigantically ahead in gold. Because if you're playing on both sides of the map, yes, you have multiple players bottom side. That means you're at a disadvantage top side of the map. And because Rogue are unable to pull off their dive kill on Camille quick enough, they get collapsed on. JDG have the extra member topside. They punish all three members of Rogue that tried to dive Zoom and were unable to catch him, thus punishing the kind of greedy double side of the map play that you pull off. That's why we're always so surprised when we see teams going for multiple objectives at once, unless they already have a very big play or they know for certain that they can pull off that dive very quickly. If you're on a timer as soon as you start that attempt. You've got to make it clean or else it turns mean. Now, top side, Hans Sama putting all the auto attacks into this tier one turret. Should be able to pick this up, no problem. And that's good because Rogue are starting to fall behind here in terms of gold a little bit. They got to make sure that JDG doesn't start to run away with this game. JDG currently up 2,000 gold, up two Drakes as well. Bottom side, looking for the dive onto Finn. 3v1 is the name of the game. The Ornhorn gets coming through. There's so many damn Rams running around the bottom lane. Finn tries to survive. He will be taken down. It's Lamau grabbing the kill, but it's a trade one for one. Yagao again. No chrono break, and the man is dead. I mean, what can he do against Finn? The CC lock is there. Boom! Finn's able to at least get a counter kill on himself for the dive attempt. I saw that little uh, you know, pop up on, on the edge of the screen there. I, I couldn't quite see what it was, but some dead body throwing up a flare. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> Bottom side, looks like we might have another dead body here in just a moment. Ganavi gets himself away, but I I think just I think watching the one orn horn run through and then the next ram show up and seemingly chase it off the map. Welcome to the concert of Orn, Captain Flowers. Silas is one of the wackiest champions to have to commentate in a fast-paced fight in League of Legends because he just makes everything so much more difficult to follow because you never know where it's going to be. But hey, we're still doing our best. We're keeping up with it. It's 10 seconds until the next Drake spawns. This is a mountain soul this time around, and JDG currently have two Drakes already in their pocket. They're bringing in the entire squad, looking to set up here for this play. Zoom gets himself out, has to flash. Otherwise, could have been caught out there, and they do not want to run into this in a five versus four. Speaking of five v four, it might be Rogue who's in that situation now. Finn runs away, but with a curtain call opened up, surely the man has no escape, and Loken puts the fourth bullet in his back. JDG, now with a man advantage on the map, will look to take their third Drake and move on to Soul Point. Oriana Ball in the pit. Rogue trying to move around from the side, see if maybe there's some sort of an angle to find some sort of a move, but Can't I do this. not think JDG will allow it. Instead, that will be third Drake of the game for JDG. Yeah, there's no way you fight without an Orn ultimate on the side of Rogue. JDG 
They're able to pick off Finn. Two top laners picked out Captain Flowers. Guess, guess which one is going to get away? Either the uh, highly yeah. mobile Camille uh, that flashes plus has hookshot, or, the, or the giant Orn that has very little mobility, also flashing there, but good follows from JDG to secure their third dragon. And JDG being on soul point at 21 and a half minutes um, really just re-emphasizes what we were talking about earlier. Now though, like the Rook from uh, Rogue, they're trying to punish here, make a counterplay while they're spread out. Okay. Let's see if Kanabi gets away from this one. Not much of a let's see to it. There wasn't enough collapse power there to really have any chance of blocking him down. So Kanabi walks out of that. That wasn't Ignite used by Vander too. So that summoner spell will not be available here for the next three minutes or so. That's an advantage for JDG as they can just walk Kanabi out without spending any of his own summoners in return. Finn on the Orn, still level 12, needs to get that next level. Very important for power spiking him. Remember, 13 is where you get to upgrade the Sunfire Cape and the <laughs> Abyssal Mask. That graph is looking pretty scary if you are a Rogue fan right now, and the gold is only continuing to grow oh, as bye. Zoom takes down that tier two in the bottom lane. Ornhorn finds the target. Bone plating is knocked off. Nice avoidance of some of the damage there with a the Hextech ultimatum. Zoom still looking to get himself away, trying to find the outplay. Inspired comes down to join the mix, and it's Finn who gets the shutdown. Now they have to worry about covering Baron here. They've got a control ward on it, so no, nothing given up here. Nice play by Rogue, collapsing once again onto Zoom, finding the kill. This is now two kills here for, for Orianna, you know, fully stacked up. Uh, Seraphs does have the extra shield. Rogue are still hoping for that big team fight victory. Can they lock down Loken, get the kill onto the back line, then deal with all the melees here? Loken does have flash, so his positioning will be a lot easier than you would think against the Pantheon Orn, which uh, you know can be very devastating. Yeah. But having that flash will be critical for JDG. And knowing that he can just save it for another two and a half minutes up until the dragon, I think that's probably the play there for JDG. They, they shouldn't actually risk cooldowns before the soul comes up because it's such a low risk, high reward for them. And, and Rogue are the ones that are gonna try and actually uh, you know, make one of these surprise plays. Uh, it, this, the possible way of them coming back here for Rogue, trying to create a pocket of Fog of War, uh, you know, to force one of those plays with Ornhorn into Orianna, uh, Shockwave, you know, combination with the Callista Pantheon. Is there possibility for, for getting a lead in that team fight? One thing I'm a little concerned about here, Kobe, I'm gonna be honest with you, is the damage output of Rogue. Look at the items coming through. In general, Callista's not going to have the same damage as a crit marksman later on in the game. Then if you look at Orianna's itemization, it is a second item chalice, which isn't going to do as much damage as something like a Rabadon's or a Spellbinder. Mm. Even Graves' itemization with a Hex Drinker after the Edge of Night. Very defensive choices coming out here from Rogue which could be the difference between being able to find one of those picks and having somebody from JDG barely get away. Well, we'll see if uh, Finn can also get another level before the fight. If he can get one more level and uh, an upgrade, probably Blade of the Ruin King for, for Han Sama, that at least will give him a little bit more juice for this critical fight coming up. But kind of as expected, JDG just waiting it out. They're yep. like, all right, we are not using cooldowns before this dragon. No reason to. One minute left on the timer. Uh, one minute is generally the time where you get your recalls off. It takes about 30 seconds uh, to walk back to the dragon after starting your reset. So that's where you see the coordination from the teams. You want to push out your minion wave. Uh, those spawn every 30 seconds. Then you get your recall off for control wards and move into the river so you can have a good setup here and find your flank. JDG now, they've got Yagao on the top side. He just pushed that extra minion wave we talked about. Now going for the recall and teleport is ready. There are deep wards through the red side uh, jungle of Rogue. So it could be a possible flank there from the back. 30 seconds until that Drake soul spawns. It's Rogue with control over this bot side river. They will have priority over the pit. They're trying to look for any sort of a chance to pick off someone from JDG that could be separated from the That's rest of the teleport. squad. But Yagao has put himself in the flank position immediately. If he pops that parallel convergence, this could be exactly what they're looking for. But instead, it's going to be Rogue starting the fight off onto Kanabi, who tries to get himself away. Vander's going to be thrown in. Aggressive Kalista ulti looking to find the damage. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of the fight, Larson's going to be in some trouble. Zoom 
diving in. Hextech Ultimatum does what it needs to do. Double kill over to the 80 carry of JDG. Finn's on the run. Hansama's kiting around, but it will not matter. He goes down. Finn barely walking away, but the bullet in his back says no, sir. Triple kill for the Jin, ace for JDG, and doom for Rogue in this bottom side team fight. It's just so cool to watch the clean setups from JDG too. On the timers, boom, they push top wave, they go back for the recalls, they have their control wards, teleport flank from Yagao for their three person flank, three different directions, and honestly, Rogue made the good call to try and make the initiation before the flank actually comes in from JDG. They make the effort to attack Kanavi, go hard with their crowd control, try and force something to get an early lead in the team fight before JDG's coordination actually comes to fruition. But it's just not enough, you know. They, they get pincered from all sides here. And you see that Camille, uh, second half of the queue onto Hansaba, takes 50% of his life. Here's the initiation I'm talking about. You have to go super hard, super early. Rogue immediately forced down onto Kanavi, onto Loken. But looking at the back, Zoom with the Hextech ultimatum, they take down Larson, the heart of the team fight. The Orion is gone. That removes so much utility and damage from your team fight. And at that point, they're easily able to pick up the rest of the members. They kind of dissect the team fight of Rogue there that tried to make the first punch. You know, valiant effort by them. 36. <laughs> Oriana did 36. <laughs> what are you going to do? So he got flanked by an Echo and a Camille. Did he hit half an auto attack? It's How hard. Do 36. <laughs> All right. He, he, Honestly, that's that's a good question. I don't know. Like an auto attack has to do more than 36. <laughs> All right, whatever. Oriana did 36, and now Rogue are starting up the Baron. They know this game is quickly slipping away from them. So, they have to go for a Hail Mary here. I will say uh, they're trying to force it here. Teleport does come in. Let's get into the fight as Yagao makes the threat. Yagao looking to come in as the curtain call opens up, chasing Rogue away. Now Vander's stuck in a hard spot away from the rest of the team. Pantheon trying to keep himself alive there with the E, but he won't be able to do it. Now the Deadly Flourish comes out, not going to find the mark, but it is going to slow them down. Ornhorn goes through, but it's not going to find a whole lot here. Rogue's still in trouble. Larson's going to be jumped on. Yagao leading the charge as Kanavi steals away the Ornhorn, but he won't be able to find the second part of Doom. Grabbing the kill onto Larson there. Hansama gonna drop, Inspire gonna drop, and JDG will take down everybody on Rogue Sands Finn. Now the Baron is theirs, the map is theirs, the lane is theirs. JDG can do whatever the hell they please. They have taken over Summoner's Rift. I found it, Flowers. We're paying so much attention to the, the team fights and the setup and the strategy for both teams. Mm -hmm. The Oriana is a support build Oriani. <laughs> He's got an ardent sensor yeah. over here. That's how you do 36 damage. And again, in this team fight, once Zoom got on him, it was a two shot on the Orianna. Again, the idea for Rogue, as we've been talking about, is to fight front to back for their team fight. That's why he's got this support build, Orianna. They want to try and have a standard, quote unquote, honorable team fight where you go, uh, you know, front to back, just work your way through. But JDG have been able to get off the flanks every single time here, just chasing them out of Baron. Uh, and we'll get another look at it. The long range slows here from the Jin to stack it up. Vander's on the side, so all members just close in. They take down the Pantheon and just chase through with the advantage. Ornhorn does go through, but it's kited out. So uh, it doesn't really get anything. And then you see the multiple forms of engage. First it was Yigao onto him, then Zoom goes in onto Larson. Just all boom, he gets two shot and they have been destroyed. JDG building up for their reunion with Dom Juan Gaming. They want to get another say about it. They want to fight at the top of the group. Kanavi's going in, and we're starting off yet another fight. The Silas is in some trouble. Going to be juggled around, nearly taken down. Goes back in for the heal there with the King Slayer, and he will find it. Stays alive for now. Turns around, the curtain call's coming down, and there goes Han Sama. Yagao with the kill as Inspired barely hobbles away. They're looking to go over the wall to chase him down, but they won't be able to do it. Yagao, he found the R key this time. He finds the chrono break. He's staying alive and JDG will continue their push. Vander is rooted up, however, he does have that shield to keep him safe. A little bit more damage onto the mid lane tier three turret takes it out. 
Kanavi still very low on health here, but JDG are confident moving forward. They have the advantage in terms of living players on the map. Han is dead for another <laughs> That's 15. a good advantage to have. That's a big old advantage to have, my friend. And Rogue are in one hell of a bad spot. They're 12,000 gold down. They're trying to defend their base, but it is so impossible at this point in time as JDG will look for the win push right here. Beautiful engage from the Mal, making sure he grabs all three with a face breaker. Now they're looking to finish this one off with the shockwave, trying to hold the line. But what can Rogue do against the assault from JDG? Zoom takes the kill on the Vander. Finn tries to run away. JDG will end this game and secure their spot in the knockout stage. Hype building for the clash at the top of the group, Captain Flowers. JDG, they've got their eyes set on Dom Juan and they walk right through Rogue. Rogue defeated means the end of their journey at Worlds 2020 is the group stage. They still will play out the remainder of their games here today. However, they are now mathematically eliminated from moving forward, as is PSG Talon. If the games play out in a way where the final scores between Dom Juan and JDG are tied, then we will have a tiebreaker there to see who gets first, who gets second. 